Today, Colin's a director and fixed income strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Good seeing you last week, Colin. Yeah, great seeing you, Oliver. Uh, so interesting start to this week, huge rally in bonds. Do you think this is the Treasury Secretary pick? Do we just need something to push back on yields or what? I'd say all signs point to the movement today being as a result of the, the Treasury Secretary pick. Um, I don't know if I totally agree with that, but I'd say that that's the key driver. It's a pretty soft economic release day, so nothing there that's really m moving the needle. We look at other geopolitical issues, I'd say nothing there that's necessarily moving the needle. So it seems like that is the key driver. This could be a um, you know sell the rumor, buy the news, or, or whatever the traders call it these days, because I don't think it really changes our outlook too much. Our concern right now, in uh, on top of just the general uncertainty that, that we're facing, is that a lot of the upcoming administration's policies we believe will be inflationary, whether it's tax cuts, tariffs, and then changes to immigration policies. Now, it's possible that the upcoming or you know supposed Treasury Secretary, maybe he can tweak things on the edges, but I don't think it's going to change the, the, the policies too much. And any way we slice it, we think that there should be, uh, you know, it should result in sticky inflation or, or potentially even a reacceleration down the road. So as we look ahead as to what this means for Fed policy, what it means for the direction of Treasury yields, it's not really changing our outlook just yet. OK, uh, big rally and uh, a smaller rally on the twos means we are getting the curve pinched. How much of this is a message about the economy and what the Fed can do, Colin? Yeah, it, it's very interesting right now what the Fed can do, because the, the incoming data, you can argue, is telling them that that they, they should be slowing it down at some point. So, and then slowing it down, maybe that's not the right phrase, but maybe that a pause should be coming soon. If, if we look at the implied probability of what the Fed might do uh, in two weeks or three weeks, it's still a greater than 50 percent implied probability of cut, uh, but it's getting closer and closer uh, to an expected pause. And I, I think the, ne the next few weeks of data are going to be really important, starting with this week's uh, PCE report. PCE is proven to be sticky if we're looking at those year over year numbers. It's expected to rise to 2.8 percent. I think that's really interesting. If we go back to the, the June meeting, the, the Fed had revised their projections of year-end inflation, and they, their their projection in June was actually for a 2.8% year-over-year change, which is what expectations are for this week. Uh, they revised that lower in September, September, I guess, on the idea that maybe their, their June projections were wrong. But if we go back to June, they talked about base effects. So we have base effects that, that could result in a minor uptick, but we're also seeing stronger inflation in the here and now. Uh, in those monthly numbers. The monthly read is expo expected to be three tenths of a percent uh, for, for, again, this is what we saw last month, and, and that's moving in the right direction. Something that I look at a lot when we're looking at those inflation indicators are we need one and two tenths of a percent increases, not three tenths of a percent, just if we want to get closer to that 2% level. So it's going to be difficult for the Fed right now if inflation proves sticky. And then looking ahead even more, I know we have plenty on this week just to talk about, but if we look at next week with a jobs report, if we get a stronger than expected report there, you know that that would further, further support the case for a pause. Okay. Uh, to your point, though, this week uh, is we do get uh, GDP, we get uh, core PCE. To your point about being more sensitive to inflation, maybe a quick thought on PCE for us, looking for 2.2% quarter over quarter. Uh, what do you think the market can tolerate here, Colin? Yeah, I think I think if something comes in a little bit stronger than expected, that's going to spook the market. Where we found over the past few weeks inline readings, especially on the inflation front, that's resulted in a sigh of relief. But anything that's a little bit stronger than expected, that's when you start to see yields move a little bit higher, especially where we are right now, given the recent pullback on today's news. I'd say that actually leaves room for, for a, a positive surprise should we get that stronger than expected numbers. When we look in the near term and where we'll see Treasury yields, I think they'll be range bound. There's a wide range of possibilities of what we can see over the next handful of months and even quarters. Um, so I wouldn't expect something you know this week with GDP, with PCE, with jobless claims, any of those. I don't think that's going to necessarily send yields on a totally different traje trajectory. I do think we're going to see a lot of volatility over the next few weeks as we try to see you know, how sticky is inflation. Is the labor market softening or is it just coming more into balance? And then what does that mean, not just next month for Fed policy, but for the next six or nine months? All right. A good setup for this week. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate the thoughts.